Breaking news now on the political front. John Kaiser, one of the Republicans many expected to challenge Senator Michael Bennett, will not make the primary ballot. Denver 7 political reporter Marshall Zellinger live right now. Marshall, he's already said he's going to take legal action. Tony, he has five days to protest the disqualification by the Secretary of State. John Kaiser collected signatures to make the Republican primary ballot. He had to get 1,500 from each of the seven congressional districts. Well, the Secretary of State just determined he he fell 86 signatures short in one of those districts. Kaiser, who stepped down from the state house to run for Senate, had to get signatures from registered Republicans. And some of the signatures could be rejected if they had also signed someone else's petition. Well, in Congressional District 3, which covers western and southern Colorado, Kaiser turned in 2018 signatures, but only 1,414 were deemed valid. He can and has said he will protest in Denver District Court. A judge will ultimately decide if he makes the ballot or not. Reporting live, Marshall Zellinger, Denver 7. Thank you, Marshall. A former Marine who raped a woman at DIA wanted his case heard by the state Supreme Court, and that is not happening. Noel Bertrand was seeking an appeal after a judge ruled his expert witness could not testify in his trial in 2012. That witness would have said that Bertrand posed a low risk to commit sex assault but could not have specifically testified to the specific charges that he was on trial for. Well, Bertrand was sentenced to six years to life in prison for that attack that happened in 2011. He must admit to the crime to be eligible for parole, and he has not done that. And new at five, middle school kids learning about sexual harassment. Now, some of you might think that's too young to be talking to kids about a sensitive subject, but a Denver group disagrees. The Blue Bench says the earlier kids learn how to identify harassment, the better they will be able to avoid it. Denver 7 reporter Lance Hernandez is live now in Brighton. Lance, students at Overland Trail Middle School learning some valuable lessons. Tony, this is really about getting a handle on sexual assault. Now, that's a topic that's way too heavy for students here in middle school, but the goal of the Blue Bench, Denver Sex Assault Prevention Group, is to get kids talking about sexual harassment, to start that conversation. Once they feel comfortable with that, as they get older, it'll be a lot easier to talk about sexual assault. We help define healthy versus unhealthy relationships, uh, identify some of the warning signs of the unhealthy piece. Health teacher Heidi Thomas says the earlier school kids have a conversation about sexual harassment, the better equipped they'll be to handle more serious issues like sex assault later on. And our goal is to change the conversation across the board. The head of the Blue Bench says statistics are eye-opening. One in four women sexually assaulted at some point in their life. Change it. We have to get everybody talking about it. One way to do that? make it more comfortable to talk about. That's where the blue bench comes in. It signifies that no one has to go through it alone, whether it's harassment or assault. Blue Bench now selling blue benches to local companies in hopes they'll put them in their lobbies to start a conversation at work. The organization also stepping up its outreach to schools. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I mean, they are already experiencing, you know, stuff like that, the kissing and all that, so they should be aware of of that sexual harassment. Carter says during the school presentation, there is some role play involving what kids see in the hallway or in text messages. It's very interesting to hear the feedback that kids give in terms of how real it is to them and how thankful they are that we have the opportunity to learn about stuff like that in health class. And Blue Bench representatives visit schools all across the metro area with the same message that it's okay to talk about harassment and what's a healthy relationship and what's not. It's hoped that over time, those presentations will help cut down on the number of sexual assaults. Reporting live in Brighton, Lance Hernandez, Denver 7. Thanks, Lance. A terrifying night for a clerk at a Denver Diamond Shamrock. The clerk taken to the hospital after injuries during an armed robbery at the gas station on 10th and Broadway. It's not clear right now the extent of those injuries. Police looking for that suspect. Armed robbers also on the run in Aurora right now. Police looking for two men accused of hitting two stores in a matter of hours, only a few miles apart. And Denver 7's Jennifer Kovaleski has uncovered new details on this story. In fact, Jen, you found out one of the suspects actually wore a clown mask. And police say he had a clown mask and a handgun.
Now, we talked to one of the clerks who was held at gunpoint. He tells us a man walked in wearing the mask and demanded all of the cash from the register. The first robbery happened at 6 this morning inside this convenience store on Colfax and Tower Road. About two hours later and only a few miles away, police say the same guy wearing that clown mask had held up this Z-Mart on Sable. This clerk at the, who was working at the first store says the man in the clown mask took off in a getaway car another guy was driving. And the whole time, he says he kept looking at the gun to make sure it was real. The money wasn't worth anyone's life, and he, there's two of us here. Even if he, like, didn't get me, if I scream or something, he's going to get someone else. This video from inside both of those stores, but have not yet released it, citing the ongoing investigation. Live in the newsroom, Jennifer Kovaleski, Denver 7. Denver 7 following breaking news. Our crews just arrived on the scene of that destructive fire in Highlands Ranch. Air Tracker 7 was over the scene just after 4 when you could still see flames. House is on Mountain Maple Avenue and it's still happening. Yeah, South Metro firefighters now have this fire out, but we do know that Denver 7's Jacqueline Allen is there on scene right now. Behind me, though, they are still here putting out some hot spots, um, trying to get this sort of finally put out. We are hearing that the fire is under control. Uh, we know this started just before 4 o'clock, and you could see those flames coming out of the roof of this house. Uh, we're being told they still don't know yet exactly what started this fire, but it looks like it started in the back of the home, possibly in the backyard, but we aren't sure if that means it was a grill or exactly how it started. But again, the good news is no one was hurt in this house fire here in Highlands Ranch. You could just see the smoke all over the area. It has died down now, though. Reporting live, Jacqueline Allen, Denver 7. Apparently, new details now in the post office boxes that were blown up recently, and we want to talk to you about that. It was done to impress a girlfriend. At least that's what investigators say 45-year-old John Bowman was trying to do when he set off a pipe bomb in this Arvada post office box last week. Bowman has been arrested and charged for the explosion near Ralston Park. And new details on Denver 7 about two shootings in Denver. The first, a deadly shooting that happened late Friday night in West Denver. We've learned the man killed was 30-year-old Jairo Perez. The gunman shot Perez on Osceola near West 2nd in, Bar in the Barnum neighborhood. This man, Daniel Gutierrez, now facing murder charges for the deadly shooting. He made his first court appearance earlier this morning. And Denver 7 has learned police have detained some new or detained some, someone connected to the shootings that took place Sunday near Larimer Square. He is 36 year old Nisha Train. Police say he admitted he is in some, was in some type of fight in that same area where four people were shot near 14th and Market. We certainly hope you spent some time outside this weekend because there are some changes ahead at the start of your work week. This is your first alert. Rain's coming our way, and, of course, Mike Nelson's all over. It's going to hit us tonight, Mike. Some of it tonight, some snow even in the mountains. The clouds are already thickening up over the Denver area. This view just east of DIA looking toward the west. And watch in the last couple of hours the showers developing with even a few thunderstorms up toward Cheyenne, Wyoming. This is part of a big storm system that's going to be moving our way over the next 24 hours. You can see all the activity swirling whirling out here in Utah and western Colorado. Now, it's still warm today ahead of this storm. Temperatures reaching the low 70s in Denver, upper 70s over southeastern Colorado. But the headlines, it was fun while it lasted. There's wet weather ahead, even some snow, and quite a cool down coming up. Your full seven-day planner in just a few minutes. Starting today, people living in Boulder getting help clearing out tree limbs and branches that came down in their neighborhoods. During the recent storms, the city's doing a special curbside pickup. Boulder is sectioned into three zones for this collection process, so to see a list of the zones and the dates when Boulder crews will be picking up in your area, you can just go to our website, thedenverchannel.com, and right there we also have a link to a map of the zones. 
Bias motivated incidents on campus are on the rise at the University of Northern Colorado. Just in the past year, consider this UNC has investigated 44 incidents. Officials define them as any verbal, nonverbal, or written behavior toward an individual or group based on identity characteristics. A response team has been created to mediate discussions between the offenders and people and their targets. The state Supreme Court has refused to take up the case involving the Denver baker who would not make a wedding cake for a same-sex couple. The owner of Masterpiece Cake Shop, Jack Phillips, refused to make a cake, cake for a same-sex couple, citing his Christian beliefs. The Court of Appeals ruled that was discrimination. The Supreme Court's decision upholds that ruling, meaning Phillips could face fines. Colorado lawmakers are cracking down on so-called dark money in politics. The state house passed a bill that closes a campaign finance reporting loophole. So now we should have a better idea as to who is paying for ads for a political party. The disclosure rules that we have now only require the individuals or groups to disclose they paid for ads only if a specific candidate is mentioned. Meanwhile, on the Republican campaign trail, two rivals are now working as allies. Donald Trump's challengers are joining forces to try and stop the GOP frontrunner because tomorrow's a big voting day in five states. Senator Ted Cruz and Ohio Governor John Kasich are collaborating and splitting the vote. So here's their plan. Kasich will bow out of Indiana, and Cruz has agreed to bow out of races in Oregon and New Mexico. I think that is a decision, an allocation of resources that makes a lot of sense. I feel that it's very fair for me to be able to uh, to go to areas where I can spend my resources most effectively. And, as, and the same is true for Senator Cruz. As for the Democrats frontrunner, Hillary Clinton is hoping to close the deal tomorrow. She already has 80% of the delegates she needs to clinch the nomination over Bernie Sanders. City of Cleveland now paying up to settle a case surrounding a controversial shooting. The family of Tamir Rice will receive a $6 million settlement from the city. A police officer shot and killed the 12 year old nearly two years ago. Reports show Rice was playing with a pellet gun at the time of the shooting. In today's settlement, the city admitted no wrongdoing. And it's no longer a free ride to the airport. The new A line to DIA will now cost you nine bucks. It was a free ride for the first couple days. And to make sure you're paying for that ride, you should know security guards will now be on the trains checking to make sure you purchased a ticket. Failing to pay for a ride could cost you a fine between $85 and $185 and potentially a couple points on your record. Just when you thought it was over, Deflate Gate is now back. A U.S. appeals court making a decision on punishment for the scandal. And what this means for champion quarterback Tom Brady. Plus, bee swarms starting to invade Colorado homes and businesses. Beekeepers take us along to collect.
We've all been talking about the passing of Prince, a music legend, and now, no shocker here, his music is dominating the digital charts just days after his death. There were more than two million Prince songs sold in the three days following his death on Thursday. That's according to Nielsen Music. The top five selling songs on iTunes right now, all his. Purple Rain is, of course, number one, followed by a little red Corvette. And by the way, it could be weeks before we know the official cause of Prince's death. All right, sorry, Tom Brady fans. The deflate gate controversy just not going away. A U.S. appeals court has ruled the New England Patriots quarterback must serve his punishment for the scandal. And that means the four time Super Bowl champion could be sidelined for four games next season. A 2015 investigation concluded Brady likely knew footballs were intentionally deflated at the AFC championship game against the Colts, making them easier to throw and catch. He was suspended for four games, but a judge overturned the ban, allowing Brady to play all last season. And more trouble for Cleveland Browns quarterback Johnny Mann. Manzel, a Dallas County grand jury, handed down an indictment against him. He's accused of assaulting his ex-girlfriend at a Dallas hotel in late January. She claims he hit her so hard that he burst her eardrum. Manzel's attorney says his client will likely turn himself in. Well, it's the time of year when many of us have to dodge bee swarms at and around our homes. It also means it's a busy time for beekeepers who collect those insects. An important job because of the nationwide concern over bee colony losses. Denver 7 Sally Mamdu joined a beekeeper today as he worked to collect a swarm of bees. Joining me right now is Jacob Paulson. Jacob, what do you do as a hobby? Well, I'm a backyard beekeeper. Okay. So I keep honeybees like these in my backyard. Awesome. And what are we doing today? Today we're at the Hilton Garden Inn at the Tech Center, and there's a swarm of honeybees. They've gathered right here under the under the tree. They're looking for a new home, and so we're gonna get in here and capture them. We're gonna put them into a bucket and give them a new home. And this is the time of year when people are calling. Yeah, this is their season, right? This is the season. The bees are looking to reproduce. They're looking to split their hives. They're looking for more homes, okay. and that's that's challenging in this environment. Right? What you're gonna do right now? We're gonna take this bucket, they and now I'm just gonna say, hey, time to gun down. Time to come on in here. Now, Jacob's still got a couple of bees to take and put right in this bucket, but this is uh, his way of transporting all the bees to his backyard, as you can see, where he will be keeping them That's and right. taking care of them. For now, we're in Denver. Sally Mandu, Denver 7. Stuff. Good and stuff. And this is not what you would normally see sitting in the planters outside the Denver City and County building. This is one of those stories you've got to see. A Canada goose has turned one of the planters into her new home. Take a look. We're told she's actually nesting eggs in that planter. Denver Parks and Recreation says she's been there for about a week, and the building staff has done a great job of helping her feel safe. Immediately um, when they saw her in there, they actually cordoned off the area to make sure people weren't bothering her. The city says the male goose is also hanging out nearby, protecting his partner and her eggs. Well, we've had a couple of quiet days, but now things are starting to change. Here's the view this afternoon and time lapse up at Copper Mountain as stormy weather beginning to build up in the high country. Rain and snow there expected tonight. In Denver and across the plains, partly cloudy skies for much of the day, but you can see how quickly those clouds are moving from the southwest to the northeast, and our current view looks a little more gloomy out there. You know, it's the time of year you've got to be ready, storm ready, and first alert is right there with Storm Shield. You know, you get your storm radar anywhere in the United States and importantly those warnings right down to your neighborhood with Storm Shield. It's been great for smartphones but brand new a new feature for folks that have an older model cell phone or a landline at home. You want to get the phone call alerts directly to your home just go to stormshieldalerts.com and you can sign up. We have you covered with any type of device now. Hardline phone, cell phone, smartphone. Let me show you what's happening right now in Denver. Our skies have clouded up a bit. 68 degrees downtown, 70 out at the airport. Look at those winds out of the south at 35. That signs of something coming. 72 is the high, 38 low. Normals are at 64 and 36. The record's 83 and 20. What's happening around the region? Here comes the shower and thunderstorm activity. None of it heavy right now, but there is some thunder and lightning northern Larimer County and near the Cheyenne, Wyoming area. It's all swirling in here with the storm system coming in from Utah. Looking at the big map, here's what's happening across the country. of a low pressure system there, a cold front just trying to move into Colorado, another low up across the Great Lakes. This is the one that will impact us tonight and tomorrow as it moves across the state. Now, for tonight, some rain and snow in the mountains, a few showers on the plains. The lows are going to be near 40 in Denver. 
Upper 30s to low 40s, mainly across the plains. Tomorrow, we start with some showers north of us early, strong thunderstorms up in Nebraska and Kansas, and some snow expected in the mountains. We're not going to have an all-day rain here, just the chance of some showers and some storms. The severe weather stays well to the east of us for tomorrow. High temperatures cooler, though, just in the upper 50s to around 60 northeast, some low 70s to the southeast, 30s and 40s expected in the mountains. So you definitely want to take a sweater and a little bit of wet weather gear for tomorrow. Tonight's forecast, partly cloudy, a few showers, the low at about 40. Tomorrow, a cooler day with a few showers. High temperature at 57, winds from the north-northwest. And looking ahead, first alert days this week. You're going to see that weather coming in again a couple of times. One, an early mix possible of rain and snow Wednesday. Quieter then for Thursday and Friday, but Saturday, a wet, cool day. Sorry about this, folks. 47 degrees for a. I'm looking at Ann's face here right now. 47 on Sorry. Saturday, and a chance of some rain and snow Friday night into Saturday morning. That this was priceless. Really what I was I'm doing. walking back over Ann's going. I was scowling. What true. is that? Five Sorry. days to change it. Yeah, it could always change. I mean, this is springtime in Colorado. Yeah, I hope that clicker a few more times. Yes, yeah, see what Maybe else happens there. Okay. Thank you. You've got those virtual virtual reality goggles, right? Right? I know of them. I don't have any. Okay. But, okay. Well, more and more companies are putting out those virtual reality headsets. And while they're gaining in popularity with consumers, some doctors aren't too happy about the technology. They're warning next. Plus, Von Miller giving us what could be a sneak peek of tonight's routine for Dancing with the Stars.
You might have noticed more and more people are getting into virtual reality as major companies release new VR headsets, but optometrists are not jumping on board. They're actually giving us a warning tonight. Doctors have raised concerns about eye strain and what's called impaired focus control, a result of the headsets holding the electronic screen just inches from our eyes. Any of these uh, digital devices, be it handheld or now with virtual reality, uh, you're staring at a screen that is uh, very close and there's uh, lots of artificial illumination and doing this for hours and hours on end without a break is likely to lead to eye strain. So what do you do? Well, doctors say if you take frequent breaks, there's no reason you can't enjoy the digital innovations. But consider this. Samsung's own user manual advises children under the age of 13 not use its Gear VR because it could impact their visual development. Now, you may want to think about moving a convenient cleaning product that could be sitting under your sink right now. Kids are mistaking laundry pods for a toy or even worse, a sweet treat and poisoning themselves within minutes. A nationwide children's hospital report that came out today shows over two years, more than 60,000 calls involved kids and these pods and packets. According to the report, two deaths were linked to the laundry packets. Most of these children were younger than three. Football fans are counting down the days until the NFL draft. Round one is this Thursday night, and Broncos fans know our team is in need of a quarterback, but getting a top prospect isn't so likely. We have an exclusive mock draft posted on our website, thedenverchannel.com. Denver 7 Sports Director Lionel Bienvenu is also watching the draft. He says he thinks the team will end up with a controversial defensive lineman, so we'll, of course, keep watching. And we can't let you go without talking about Broncos linebacker Von Miller giving us a possible preview of the moves he's bringing to the dance floor on Dancing with the Stars tonight. He posted this clip with his partner, Whitney Carson, doing the running man. That was over the weekend, so Dancing with the Stars, <laughs> as you know, airs right here on Denver 7 at 7 o'clock. He's so fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. How far is he going to go? We'll He'll be there late He's into this, in there. this contest for sure. Thanks for joining us. World News, David Muir, next. See you at 6.
We can no longer sit by and idly watch as our students are getting targeted. Um, we have so many things happening in the country right now that we have to respond to. Um, and it's, I think it's more dangerous for the university to remain silent.
We're also following breaking political news right now. John Kaiser. Highway 36 sees tens of thousands of travelers every day. But what the Colorado State Forest Service is worried about are not the humans. I, it's way too much candy for you. Girl, she had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> She's like, ah. <laughs> Easter candy. They have like a whole section of Easter candy. It's like a dog. Okay.
Yeah, such as why were two board members allowed to walk inside the school with Grace Davis and meet with her unannounced. Windy out here, man. Did you drive them? them and then I oh, you are a good son. <laughs> you are a good son. What do your parents do? My dad owns a cool, thank you. He does. We are continuing to follow breaking news out of Highlands Ranch right now. This house completely destroyed after a fire earlier today. That fire started on the deck of the home on Mountain Maple Avenue. The winds just whipped those flames toward the house. And as you can see, did some pretty good damage. Air Tracker 7 was overhead. Flames shooting out of the roof. The entire back of the house is completely charred. We can tell you four people were able to get out of the house and no one was hurt. We're also following breaking political news right now. John Kaiser, one of the Republicans many expected to challenge Senator Michael Bennett, will not make the ballot. Now he says he's already taking legal action and has five days now to protest the disqualification by the Secretary of State. Kaiser had to get 1,500 signatures from each of the seven congressional districts, but fell 86 signatures short in one of those districts. Well, a judge will ultimately decide if he will make that ballot or not.